to, to our next speaker. Uh, and uh, and uh, we're going to ask a question to Mr. Pierre Viod, who is an executive director of the SIGPA Security Solutions. So he already has the solutions in the, in the title of the company. The company was founded in 1927 with a headquarters in Lausanne in Switzerland, and SIGPA is a world-leading privately-owned company providing security identification, traceability, and authentication solutions and services worldwide. Pierre, please tell us uh, what private sector thinks about all these technological developments. How are you going to participate in that, in the shaping the future policies or... Uh, are you going to take part in this, or do you think you want to stay away? I, I, we want to hear your ideas and your opinions, how private companies, private sector views these threats, and how yeah, you will be involved in this. Floor is your peer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Irak Lee. And first, I would like to address the Chair, Your Excellency, and to, um, of course, express my sincere thanks uh, for inviting us and also to uh, director of the UNICRI and to the European Union to ask the private sector to express its views about these uh, CBRN issues. Because today um, I, I've been hearing and listening and learning a lot from all your, from, from all of you. And um, I would express certainly my, my gratitude uh, to, to see the level of government that uh, many member states of the UN have been paying and to the, the magnitude of the attention that you pay to this, to this event, to this, the magnitude of this terror, which is likely to happen. The, the, the point I would like to, to make today is, a, is, is in one word. 15 years ago at the moment, the United Nations voted the famous revolution against terrorism. And today, the technology, the technological landscape was totally different. Absolutely different. Today, the technology has been evolving at the same pace. A criminal brain is sinking. The criminal brain has two major differences be in comparison of a normal brain. His hate is limitless. And his space in finding the, uh, and, uh, and reaching the objective of his hate is fabulously high. And this is totally different from a normal brain, from the village idiot to the most Einstein person, you've got a brain which is isolated somewhere in the world. And the guy is just watching states and their population. Let me just give you an ID of what was the technology exactly 15 years ago. You got this thing, which was at the left side, absolutely useless compared to a smartphone. And you've got this computer, which was the equivalent of two days, a chip that is going on your finger. The same capacity. And the first word here is miniaturization, increase computing power of accessible devices such as cell phone. If you want to address practically the CBRN issue today, you member states, you need to think that you need four pillars. Technologically, technologically, sorry. The first pillar is, of course, that we all know, the security gates with X-ray gates, radiological gates, RFID gates. The second pillar is portable chemical sensing. The third pillar is continuous monitoring 
and the fourth pillar is tracking and tracing. Tracking and tracing is something which is not very rocket science. Since the postal services has been invented in the Middle Age, tracking and tracing is existing. What's, what is a letter? The letter that you're going to send from point A to point B is something very, very elementary. All postal service in the world know where is your letter. And they do deliver that. But securing tracking and tracing is something totally different, which was not existing even 15 years ago. So I propose to you a short travel into a holistic approach of those four pillars. The first pillar, as I told you, is security gates. Today, and compared to, to, to the time of 15 years ago, cargo inspection can be today performed on fast and then non-invasive way and ports and distribution centers. Load and presence of dangerous materials, CBRN materials, can be checked. X-ray, RFID, radiology can help you in such a task. You know how many containers are in circulation on the surface of the earth at the moment we speak? It's very difficult to understand. But for a criminal brain, it's very easy. It's 44 million containers in circulation at the moment we speak. If a guy with a criminal brain wants to hide something which is harmful to the, to the mankind, is going to do it. Second pillar is portable chemical sensing. This second pillar is absolutely essential for the chemical products which can be, which can become a chemical weapon by assembling chemical products. And the continuous monitoring of the presence of explosive and dangerous chemical substance is today possible. And techni technically, I don't speak politically, the whole planet could be monitored in real time using what was not existing even 15 years ago, the cell phone network. Third pillar, the continuous public space monitoring. And here is something that as well was not existing 15 years ago. It's the real time and remote detection of chemical threat in public threat, in, uh, in public, um, sorry, in public spaces. Today you have the possibility to detect in a public place like a railroad station, an airport, a public place, whatever, you have the possibility to detect a very few molecules from 20 to 26 molecules on 1 billion molecular circulation in the air. You use infrared cameras with captures and reflectors. No neck eye is going to see that featuring. But this is already existing, and we had a confrontation with Dr. Smith yesterday uh, here. It is already deployed in some, in some places, public places. I think as a pilot, so certainly, it's, it's, it's going to spread, but it's going to change the uh, possible detection. And let me go now to a, a, an industrial trend. This trend is based on what is existing, what is currently developing, and what will be existing in the near future. The tracking and tracing of all those 44 million containers is something which is a headache. Because you can load, you can upload, you can deload, you can reload a container. If you don't know what's going on into the supply chain, you're done. 
You're literally dumb. Therefore, you've got what we all know there, the legal supply chain, from the manufacturer up to the consumer, the final purchaser buying legitimate product. But you've got also the bad guys at the bottom, the illicit channel, which is the exact symmetry of the licit channel. And you've got some events. The first event is a fictitious export on the, in the supply chain with fraudulent declaration up to the purchaser unknowingly buying illicit products. If you want to stop this first event, therefore, you need to create a product identity to enable traceability. If you want to, uh, to stop the two which are at the right of this, uh, of this supply chain, you need to create product authentic authentication to distinguish fake from genuine. If you want to stop which is at the middle of the supply chain, you need to create a product history by collecting all those events. And therefore, you're going to isolate the legitimate and compliant business from the ROG operators and criminal organization. Those people are very marginal. But because they, are, they have a brain which is shaped for terror, they are totally different like the rest of the mankind. So, if I summarize, you got those four pillars. And if you want to get inside those four pillars, what is, is, what is existing today and what is developing? Today, the product identity is existing, but only on serialization and secure level of containers. What is inside the container is in product marking solution. This is totally a new developing world. Uh, five or six years ago, a Texas uh, industry, Authentics, started those pagans for oil and gas industry. Today, those pagans are moving towards new liquids, which are acids. But when you take the tagons, which were put in the oil and gas industry, you put that in acid citric or chlor, whatever is the acid, it dissolves. It is a, a key issue. And when you are a terrorist and you mix chemical products to become an explosive, should you have put some tagants inside between the two acids, between the fertilizer, your urea, and the acids? There is no stability. This is a true and basic knowledge that all of us must know. Therefore, the industry is investing massive amounts of millions of dollars in trying to understand how to stabilize those tagants to be traceable for the in-product marking solution. This is going to happen, but with billions in investment. Second pillar, existing capability. We all know today the product authentic authentication is existing to distinguish genuine from fake. If you go also to what is possible in terms of uh, graduation of the authentication today, and that was not the case two years ago, today a simple consumer having downloaded an app on his smartphone with a certain low-level security compared to law enforcement officer who, who, is going, who are going to get 
very higher standards of apps in terms of security, today a consumer may see if something is fake or genuine. In a shop, in a retail place, protocol authentication is a mix between existing and developing capabilities. And if you go to the product history, therefore, you are now in the existing capabilities. Because you can go using very simple technology and very simple scanners from, to see aggregation and disaggregation inside a container, a maritime container or air container. And therefore, here you are in the, in the field of developing capabilities by create product history. And this technology is just out of the laboratories. It has not been deployed anywhere in the world, but it's now on shelf. That you exactly know when you are a manufacturer, when you're a buyer, when you're a seller, where exactly is your product? And if the container is safe, has it been open? Where is it? By whom it has been opened? Has it been reloaded? By what? And this is product history, and therefore you can control most of your supply chain. When you create all those pillars, you create intelligence through monitoring, inspection, control. And today, I would like to express my gratitude to the European Union for creating the Eden project inside the FP uh, framework program, sorry, number seven, uh, with regard of uh, the Eden program. And you've been bright enough at the European Union to construe a consortium of 70 enterprises. And I'm very happy to tell you that SIGPA is working inside this consortium with all the rest of the 69 companies uh, in terms of CBR and contamination detection in food stuff and enhanced track and tracing solution in food defense scenarios. Thank you.